I joke that ignorance is bliss. I mean, if my ignorance is the only thing that's gotten us to this point, because if somebody would have laid out on a giant whiteboard, everything that would have to happen from January of 2020 until right now for us to do what has happened, it would have been a mile long and I would have looked, taken one look at it and said, no way, that's overwhelming and impossible. I'm Carolyn Hadlock, Executive Creative Director at Young and Laramore, and this is the Beautiful Thinkers Project, a podcast where I ask founders, creators, leaders, and visionaries how they bring their ideas to life. As we enter these conversations with thinkers across disciplines like art, science, and business, we'll learn a little bit more about the practices and identifiers that create beautiful thinking, something defined so individually, but so universally recognizable. Welcome to the Beautiful Thinkers Project. Today I'm talking with Bryce and Jill Morrison. They are a husband and wife team who founded MomWater. They founded the company in January of 2020, right during a pandemic. I don't think there's a better time for a a new spirit to come on board. And I just want to welcome you guys to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Maybe, Jill, I'll start with you. Um, Obviously, it's named MomWater. And I just like would love to hear the genesis of, of how it came to be. Well, we were on vacation in the Dominican, and I was struggling to find a beverage that I liked. I don't like all the sweet, sugary, fruity, uh, frozen cocktails. I discovered some fruit-infused water sitting on the bar one day. Loved it. was hydrating. Uh, so I walked up and asked them to put my vodka straight into my water. Uh, came back to the U.S., tried to recreate it. Couldn't get that accomplished very easily. Uh, we started, you know, doing some mixing here at home. We put in a pool, started experimenting with some different vodkas and waters, and finally just decided I would take a water bottle, drink a little bit out, pour the right combination of vodka in it to where I couldn't taste it, and mix it up and put it in the cooler. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, one day, one of our kids grabbed my bottle of water, and Bryce you know, informed me, maybe I should start labeling these bottles of water so that the kids don't get it. Yeah. So I jokingly wrote with a magic marker, mom on the side. And so then we had a cooler of mom special waters and a cooler of regular waters. <laughs> it just kind of stuck. And then uh, my marketing other half here started hearing our friends calling it mom water. And he's like, hmm, it's kind of catchy. And it just kept rolling from there. I read the story, um, about you having a pool and just kind of the the context that that creates with being outside and being around the kids and, and wanting to have an adult beverage, but not mm-hmm. wanting to necessarily promote that to the kids. And we were drinking seltzers and everybody, you know, those just after so many, everybody would be bloated. And I was like, I wish I could just find a beverage that had water and vodka. You know, when you walk into a restaurant and you try to ask for that, you get some fancy, fancy combination or they... You know, it doesn't come out right. It doesn't taste right. So I was just trying to mix the perfect combination and wishing I could find it. Yeah. So talk to me about, um, and either one of you guys, feel free to jump in, but I know um, this was kind of in your in your purview for your, for your palate, but what were some of the flavors you guys explored early on and what are the ones that are really uh, selling well right now? Passion fruit is what I was drinking on that particular vacation. So that's what we kind of started with. Um, then we just started picking a few other flavors, um, trying them out with friends just to see what was, you know, popular vote. You know, when we went in, we were, we honestly didn't know much about any of the process or, um, you know, working on trying to narrow flavors down. So, you know, we'd go, Hey, maybe strawberry would be a good flavor. Not realizing you could kind of dial in strawberry, you know, probably could be a thousand different combinations just within a strawberry. You know, it could be a super ripe strawberry, a a slightly unripe strawberry. It could be, you know, a a candy strawberry. So we're trying to imagine what would look good sitting in a big carafe of fruit infused water or fruit combinations that tended to go well together, um, but would drink well as water, not not with carbonation hiding the flavor, not with a lot of sugar hiding the flavor. So that's how we approached it. Uh, we started with eight flavors. Uh, some of the ones that maybe didn't make it in, like you know, we had some strawberry based ones. I think we had like a strawberry lemon or a strawberry blueberry. I think we had a cherry lemon that was pretty close to making it. Um, but we honestly we didn't have these really 
elaborate, you know, tasting panels. It was uh, a lot of us and, and the moms that tended to be with us in our pool and, and hang out with Jill and they would come over and around our kitchen table. And that was, that was a laboratory that did the initial flavors. We wanted everybody to help us narrow down the flavors from eight to four. Um, and we mainly use Jill's palette to produce like the flavor concentrate, the citric acid levels, the ABV level, things like that. We wanted it to match. Like we were trying to go based off her palette because her palette, you know, when she would have one of her friends try it, they're like, wow, that's really good. They liked her little you know, what she was making in her water bottle that tended to go well with everyone. So we were trying to reproduce that. Got it. Um, the Karen and Linda, which the Karen is lemon blueberry and the Linda is blueberry peach. Uh, those two tend to be the ones that probably right now are selling the best um, across most areas, just overall. Um, and I think it's because, you know, with lemon, uh, everyone's used to drinking lemon water. Mm -hmm. So that's a very comfortable flavor profile when people are drinking water. And the peach blueberry, just very well blended, balanced. It's it's light. It's easy to drink. A lot of people say it, it's, if you will, this one of the smoothest of all of them. So I think that's kind of why those two. And, and, you know, the Karen name is probably uh, a lot of people associate that with the meme, even though we kind of we picked that name before the meme. Um, but that probably helps a little bit on that one, too. Yeah. Well, and, and I'd love to hear you guys talk about that because it just made me laugh when I saw it on, on the shelf. But so talk about your naming, how you picked them, and then you mentioned uh, that you picked it before the meme. But just tell me a little bit about the naming conventions. The names were it, – it's interesting. We, we didn't <laughs> – we didn't put a ton of thought into a lot. A lot of this was just kind of this side project that Jill and I were doing. And so we're like, Hey, yeah, let's, let's put names on them. And then let's, let's kind of make each can its own personality. And, you know, you'll notice if you look at the cans, they've all got three descriptive words. We tried to use of just like in general words that might describe moms. And so we wanted to have a can be a personality, not just a flavor. And so the only thing we were trying to do was pick relatively common names. There was two of them that maybe had any kind of meaning. And the one would be Linda, right? Um, the uh, That kind of stemmed from, I don't know if you've ever seen the YouTube video, the Listen Linda video. Uh -uh. Um, if not, you've got to watch it. <laughs> it <laughs> okay. is hilarious. Entertaining. Uh, it's a little boy just pleading with his mom. He's in trouble. She's scolding her. And it's one of those things where it was just like, for whatever reason, top of our mind of like, you know, that Lady Linda could probably mom use more mom water than anybody. <laughs> it was just this perfect mom moment. So that was kind of the inspiration behind Linda. The Julie was actually, um, that's kind of, you know, a, a fun uh, alter ego of Jill's. You know, our kids would just kind of call her that when she'd go into vacation planning mode. Yeah. They'd call her Julie. And, and at first I said, hey, I think we should put Jill on here. And she's like, no, I don't want my name on a can. So I agreed to Julie. <laughs> I said, well, fine, let's let's Your put alter Julie. Ego. That's, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. a little Easter egg because that's also the passion fruit flavor, which is what started it all. So, you know, Julie is is kind of Jill's, uh, that's that's hers. And then, so did you guys ever get backlash for for the Karen, even though you didn't do it intentionally before the meme? Uh, not really on the Karen. I mean, there was a few people, we, we kind of figured there was probably, I mean, in, in today's age, it's hard to do anything without getting some kind of backlash as Jill and I sitting here going through this. It was like, we had label designs done when this started happening. You know, we had gone through this process. We picked all this stuff and this started blowing up and we kind of looked at each other. We're like, man, this is almost becoming, you know, poor Karen's it's become a negative to <laughs> yeah. their name. You know, if your name Karen, I mean, it, it became this negative thing. And we're like, do we drop it? You know, is that just going to, are people going to think we just did it because of that? And we decided in the end, it was like, we didn't want to redo everything. And we thought, you know, maybe we'll be able to, to kind of <laughs> bring something enjoyable back to the Karens of the world. You know, they've gone through a rough <laughs> year. Uh, so we thought, you know, that might be something fun. Let's keep it. We've got, you know, we're all about you know positivity with, with the whole mom theme is, is not a, it's, it's to celebrate moms. It's to celebrate all that they are and do. So we thought, you know, maybe this will be something positive. So we decided to keep it. Yeah. Oh, I think it's great. It's a, it's a fun thing to be able to draft on something, you know, and not, and sort of lean into it and, and, yep. and kind of embrace it. As you said, it's, it's kind of bringing some positivity back to it, you know, not the other way around. It's all about intentions. I mean, what, what are your intentions? Our intentions aren't to take advantage of this meme or do anything else. You know, this was, 
you know, we're, we're we still have these full-time jobs. I mean, this was something we, we didn't get into it for just to, for a quick buck or anything like that. It was very organic the way this all happened. Um, we weren't looking to do this. And, you know, our intentions were just to try to be, make this a very positive and fun brand. I mean, we're from Indiana, but we've got palm trees and sun in our logo. And that's legitimately just because that's what brings a smile to both of our faces. Yeah. You know? That vacation. Something? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's all about fun, positivity. We want the brand to be something that people can really have fun with, which has been the case so far, which just uh, makes us both really happy. Yeah. 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 Well, and Jill, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more, you know, obviously the ready to drink segment is on fire right now and seltzers just started this, this, ball rolling. I don't know of any other ready to drink beverage that's not carbonated. I, I kind of feel like you guys might be the only one that I'm familiar with, but I'd love to hear you talk more about the choice in that. Yes. Again, that was kind of my taste palette. I said, I wish I could just walk into a bar and get this in a ready to drink form. And now realizing two years later, it's quite the hard process. I wanted to be chemical free. I wanted to be all natural. You know, those were things that were important to me. And it's hard to create that in a world full of seltzers and beer. Yeah. And, it, and, and Jill would always say to me, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to find something that I can drink around the pool in hot weather that's low calorie and it's not loaded with sugar. Yeah. And, and they a lot of them like the seltzers. The problem would be if it's a hot, sunny day and you drink a, a, a few of them, you tend to get, you know, bloat and you tend to get, you know, headache and it, it just is one of those things where carbonation is hard to drink in volume. You know, I love beer, but the older I get, the less I can drink of it. And so I, I drink a ton of mom water here at home. That's what I started drinking when she was like, hey, try this. Yeah. And it's interesting to hear you guys talk about, you know, the natural chemical free piece. Was it hard to go from sort of your homemade concoctions into manufacturing? Yes. When we um, finally got the formulation that we were ready to go to find a co-packer, there weren't very many that were not going to use a chemical. So I pushed for that. Um, I really wanted to choose one that didn't use chemicals or preservatives or anything like that. So that was a challenge to find somebody that was able to do it. We found a beverage laboratory to kind of partner with because we didn't have the ability to make sure we had all the correct ingredients. You know, we wanted to do this right. Yeah. And so, you know, they were able to pretty much do what we wanted. It all came down to cost. And, and that's what we started figuring out very quickly. Um, why in the industry, most all of your seltzers and, and a lot of other cocktails or drinks are wine based or malt based, right? Because then they're a beer or a wine then you can be sold at different places. You're taxed differently. Um, why they use sodium benzoate instead of maybe tunnel pasteurizing all their products? Well, because it's cheap. You can just throw that in and your shelf life's good, but it is, you know, it's a preservative. Hmm. So when we started going through, they're like, yeah, we can do all these things. It's just not necessarily going to be cheap. And, and they start talking about margins and everything else. Well, going back to the reasons we were in this, it was like, well, we're wanting to make something we want to drink. We're not yeah. in this to necessarily say we have to have the best margins or anything else. You know, we were kind of like, Hey, great. If we, if we're able to turn a profit, awesome. Um, so we weren't sure if it was going to just be a local thing or a regional thing or what we were going to do. So is yours then not classified as a, a beer? Is it classified as a spirit then? That's right. Yeah. How yeah. did that change your distribution game? It's interesting. Um, in certain ways, obviously it, it hurts us because, you know, we can't be sold, let's say at a local grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, uh, they can carry beer and wine, but they don't have a liquor license. Um, certain bars and restaurants, right? They, they might not have a liquor license, but they can sell beer and wine. Uh, festivals, you know, we can't be at a festival um, because we're a liquor. And the only way to do liquor in Indiana is through an artisan distiller's license, which are tough to get. You have to have your own distillery. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of downsides when it comes to distribution. Actually, you know, in Kentucky, there's certain things that make it a benefit. It's actually more attractive for a retail store to purchase our product versus maybe a seltzer because we're a liquor. Yeah, I think that's great, though, that you guys kind of, you know, stayed the course on it. So where is Mom Water manufactured? Where's it made? So we found a brewing company. Um, we have it was actually, we went through two or three. Um, ignorance is bliss. And as I was going through this whole process, you know, I learned a lot. And 
made a lot of mistakes and just kind of kept chugging along. But we finally found a, um, a company in Toledo, Ohio, and their name is Mommy Bay Brewing Company. You know, the only issues has been the, the volume. You know, our volume went from us being their smallest to, to being one of their largest customers in a matter of months. And so uh, they've been growing along with us. <laughs> oh, that's great, though. So yeah, talk about where, where can you find Mom Water now? Where is your distribution? How far does it go? Indiana and Kentucky so far, we are working on expansion into other states. Um, like you said earlier, each state has different licensing. So we're trying to make our way through that challenge. Okay. And then are you guys available in bars and hospitality? Yeah. So they're starting to start to pick up on it a little bit more. So in Indiana, there's probably a few more that do carry it. Kentucky is starting to do the same. Part of our issue has still been keeping up with demand, which has been just insane this entire summer. And are they just hearing about it from people coming in or how are they getting the, the word out? The marketing aspect has been really, really crazy and nothing either of us expected because we've really not had time uh, to do a whole lot of marketing. We haven't done really any advertising. Um, it's been social media. And we've had, there was, there's been a few videos here and there on like TikTok and a few others that we didn't do. We didn't even pay people to do them at all. They just kind of popped up. And I think they saw this fun product and thought, wow, this is really cool. And it's really unique. And they decided to do a video. And then some of those videos just blew up. And from those videos, it seemed like we had a lot of people that learned about mom water and were contacting us and emailing us. Yeah. It just seems like, yeah, perfect fodder for TikTok. Yeah, it really had. It's kind of funny, I think. And that's, again, it, it, it's fun for us to see people having fun with the product. I mean, that's the whole point. Again, it's the positive vibe. The Mom Water brand, when people do those videos, it's actually been some of their highest hitting videos that they've ever done, no matter the size of the video or the size of the account. It always tends to draw eyes. And I think it's just because it's kind of unique and fun and something people are genuinely interested in. I mean, even when I was growing up, it was always, you always knew mom's water. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's just, it's so simple. I'm really shocked that it wasn't taken, you know, if you think about it. <laughs> we were too. <laughs> yeah. So um, what was, what was the moment when you guys looked at each other and said, you know, let's like really make this, let's, let's go beyond the homegrown. Jill was the first one that said we need to do it. And I kind of laughed and I was like, yeah, right. You know, and, 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 you know, the two of us, I mean, we're both in healthcare. Bill's an occupational therapist. Yeah. Uh, and I, but I'm in, and I'm in healthcare, but I'm in sales and marketing. So the business side of things is, would be more my wheelhouse, even though I didn't have experience with any of this. So, you know, we kind of joked and I'm like, you mean me, you know, I'll, I'll have to figure this and this. And I'm just like, huh, I don't even, I don't even know where to start. And so I kind of blew it off and she was persistent. Thank goodness. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, we should really do this. And, and it honestly, for me, I think when I finally hit it one day, I happened to be riding home with several of my buddies and one of the moms of our group had come to get us from the golf course that day. And we're riding home and she just, for some reason, she made the comment something about mom water, Jill's mom water. And when she said it, and I don't know what it was during that point, but it, registered in my head and it wasn't long after I told you I'm like all right maybe I'll at least start doing a little research <laughs> and seeing what would be involved and where we would even start do you have investors are you backing this yourself I mean that's got to be a, a hill to get over <laughs> yeah we have backed everything up till this point um everything has been we pretty much put our life savings into it um we've tried to be very smart about everything thankfully it has grown without the giant advertising push that a lot of companies need. That's been the blessing in disguise. We've talked to several people in the industry and they say that's not, that's super uncommon, super rare for a product to be able to kind of sit on a shelf and someone notice it and buy it and then like it enough to come and buy it again. So um, until recently, we have decided to make a big push for expansion next year because of the outpouring of support we've seen. Yeah, uh, We've seen, we've gotten emails from, Every state in the United States, plus other countries, New Zealand, UK, uh, you name it, we've gotten emails from people asking when it will be available to them. All of that support has kind of made us go, you know, this is something we need to look at. Let's let's take another leap of faith. Let's look at doing this full time. And we brought on uh, someone that we know and trust very, very well on the operations side, you know, as a partner. 
And, you know, he's there to help us continue to get it to that level. He's going to be our acting COO, um, makes really good sense for all of us involved. And the main reason to do that for us up to this point is because we do want to grow our brand and we want to get it into other states like Florida, the SEC states. I mean, we've got a palm tree in our logo. We need to be in a state with palm trees. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what our main goal is for now we want to be able to grow throughout the states and we want to be able to deliver it throughout the United States. Kind of you mentioned earlier, we feel like we do have a really strong brand and product that matches, um, a, you know, kind of a story to go along with it. You know, we're not in it for, for a quick buck and that's not what we're looking for. So all of these things are all unique and good things to have in the industry. It's very rare to have all of them at once, you know, a, a strong brand, a strong product, a strong story. And, you know, with all of that, we kind of went, well, you know, let's, let's look at trying to bring it to everybody and maybe we can be first to market in, in this particular category. Well, and, and, you know, um, marketing is such a big piece of it, as you said, but I think a good name can carry you so far. And I feel like you guys don't have a, just a name, you have an insight, right? You have, it's sort of like the lexicon for code, like how people talk. And so I think there's just already something kind of fun and mysterious baked into that. So, and having the uh, ability to not make these choices, I mean, you have to think if this were, a, you know, a bigger spirits company, I'm sure they would have made these, you know, small cuts along the way and it just wouldn't be the same. Yeah. We've been quite surprised by the people that have bought it based on the name alone or based on the uh, mom's names on them <laughs> Yeah, and tried it and then liked it or tried it and said, oh, wait, that's not what I thought it was going to be, but still enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, because I even think about when Coke did that with the names on the bottle and just the, I mean, that was just, there was more customization, but I do think there's, you know, a fun, it it does personalize the mom piece of it in a a really unique way. So I think that the naming construct makes a lot of sense. You founded the company in 2020, but you weren't really on shelves till 21 and largely, I'm guessing that's because of a pandemic and distilleries weren't really making spirits for a while. Is that is that part of the story there? Yeah, a lot of COVID challenges. Most of the issue with what we were doing was, number one, we weren't big enough to be able to go into these really large facilities that have all the abilities we need because we require some unique things. Since we're not carbonated, something has to pressurize our can, right? So we need nitro dosing and we need we wanted to use the sleep cans instead of the regular squat beer cans because it fit our product. That was really important. And not every canning line has that ability. Mm. And we also needed every can to be tunnel pasteurized. So these are all not super unique to the industry, but super unique to usually your smaller co-packers. So these large facilities would say, yeah, we've got all that ability, but you know, you have to run a million dollars of product a month minimum for us to even shut down our line and put your product on it. And obviously for us, that was not an option. So we were looking for small operations that could do all of these things. Your list got very, very, very narrow and short. And so it was really tough. A lot of them were not taking on any new customers uh, because they were short staffed and they were putting their resources into hand sanitizer in the pandemic. Well, so as you guys um, think about growing this and making it a full-time thing, um, you know, what advice would you have for other entrepreneurs who are kind of maybe in the beginning stages of, hey, I think I'm onto something, but I'm not quite sure. And it doesn't have to be in the spirits industry, but do you have any sage advice after living through it yourselves, how to give them any counsel on making a go of it? Honestly, for me, I, I think especially in in whatever industry you're going in, I think a lot of it is about your contacts and your network. Talk to as many people as you can. Be a giant sponge uh, of of information and knowing that you don't always have to have every answer. There's a lot of other people in whatever industry you're going into that are probably going to have that information. And they're more than willing to share it if if you're just cordial, genuine, earnest, and and, and you take a little time out of your day to maybe talk to them. Couple that with just just believe in what you're doing. Uh, don't be afraid if you don't know something. I'm, honestly, I, I joke that ignorance is bliss. I mean, if my ignorance is the only thing that's gotten us to this point, because if somebody <laughs> would have laid out on a giant whiteboard, everything that would have to happen from January of 2020 until right now for us to do what has happened, 
it would have been a mile long and I would have looked, taken one look at it and said, no way that's overwhelming and impossible. Yeah. Um, but because I didn't know what I didn't know, <laughs> it actually was a good thing. Did you guys even consider investors at, at any point? We had talked about it frequently and we have a lot of friends who have said, don't let anyone in, don't bring on investors, try to do everything yourself. And really we weren't even looking at bringing on investors um, until recently when we kind of made the decision to say, you know, we've seen enough, we've heard enough from industry experts and everybody else that says, you know, here's what we would do. We'd go to, we'd blow it up and we'd try to get into these other states as soon as we can. And when we started saying that, we're like, all right, we're going to need some investors. I could definitely use more expertise on the day-to-day operations and growing the business. Um, I can figure those things out over time, obviously, but we don't have a lot of time. And, And that was one of those things where time is obviously money. Um, so that's where some kind of guided some of our recent decision making. Well, I would not be surprised to have somebody come come a knocking from the big spirits brands. <laughs> to uh, I feel like innovation and a lot of innovation is just acquisitions right now. You know, people like you guys seeing an opportunity in the market, seeing a gap, filling it, figuring it out, getting it going, and then you know these companies come in and, and, and purchase you. So. I think it's I think it's awesome that you guys have been able to do as much as you have on your own and and you know the world needs more independent brands and companies so that's a good thing. Um, talk about your relationship of building a business with your husband and your wife. Has it been challenging or hard for you guys? Or you want, you want to fill that one, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can both answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been both. I think both challenging and fun. Um, his brain never stops talking about mom water, but that's the marketing aspect of him. Yep. Yeah, I, it's it's honestly not bad because our skill sets and everything else, you know, they complement each other. They're not. There's not a lot of overlap. I don't. I don't mind public speaking and and engagements and podcasts and all these things because that's always been a part of my job is being a, a public facing type person, right? Yeah. Jill's job is is more on the thinker side. And, you know, honestly, like without her entire palette and motivation to do all of this, it wouldn't even have happened. It's really worked well. And as we go, we're starting to see like where each one of our skill sets will work within the business. You know, technically, but we're, we're both still working our full-time jobs right now. Yeah. Um, and raising a family. That's, <laughs> yes. that's been the, yes, coming on some full-time job and then still having that help with home. Work. And he's over here working on a mom work project and there's just a lot going on. So do they do do they get sick of hearing you guys talk about the business? Not that we've noticed. Well, oddly enough, I think they're very curious about everything. Yeah. And we try to limit our conversations and focus on family things when they're around, but you know, it gets hard. Uh, especially our oldest. I think he's been very curious about it. I think it actually kind of excites them and they they think it's kind of neat that hey, our mom and dad that, you know, probably were pretty lame up until now. I've at least done something. And, you know, they walk into a, walk into some place, a, you know, a restaurant or something, and there's a mom water on the menu or whatever the case is. I think that kind of piqued his interest and, and almost to the point to where he's at least expressed a little interest in being involved down the road, you know? Well, yeah. I imagine you guys got some good cred when you had some stuff blow up on TikTok for them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of the questions I was going to ask you, Jill, I mean, in marketing – Marketers get moms wrong all the time. They're too superficial or they're too, it, it just doesn't work most of the time. What, what do you think has been, how do you think you guys got it right? I would just say organically being around the group of moms that I'm friends with um, all have, you know, unique personalities and him seeing all the different sides of a mom, not just a, like you said, superficial mother image. You know, we don't try to be perfect. We're everyday average moms and You know, he sees what all of us, you know, all of our personalities and trying to just portray that. Yeah. And and to kind of add to that, we didn't really, we didn't put a ton of thought into like, because I think everything, again, it goes back to intent. Our intent wasn't to, to try to have this really strategic brand that would target a specific, whatever. It just kind of happened that way. It's like, you know, it was called mom water. That made sense. It sounded good. And we said, we don't want to, we, we don't want to do this, like making fun of moms. Like we, we want to be like in celebration of moms. And, and when we kind of got into this, we were trying to pick like words or phrases to say what we had to describe our brand 
what would it maybe be, you know, to help us with our vision and our colors and all these. And, and it kind of came down to this phrase that was playfully sophisticated. Mm-hmm. We still want to be playful. And, and there's obviously some tongue in cheek and funness because it's called mom water, you know, but there's also this kind of sophistication to it. We're, we believe ourselves to be a, a high end brand. So playfully sophisticated was kind of this phrase that we kept going back to. So do men drink this too? I know, I know Bryce, you do, but what are the dads drinking it? Yeah, we have some dad friends who are loving it. Um, <laughs> they live on Linda and they. <laughs> it's hilarious. So one of the really big things we did not expect, obviously a lot of this is unexpected, but one of the things within that is that a lot of guys are drinking it. And, and, and I'm not talking just any guys. I'm talking young guys, old guys. It doesn't matter. Um, I've had guys, you know, fully bearded, tattooed up, come to me in a sampling and they walked out with like a case of it. Um, that's amazing. It's, it, it's so cool to see that everybody just enjoys it. Cause I think, you know, everybody's got a mom, everybody celebrates moms. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of that thing where it, it's, it's okay and cool to be able to still drink it. And, you know, for all the, the guys out there, you know, I have a little, there's an Easter egg on the bottom of all of our cans. They, it's a little message that says dads are cool too. And, Oh, that's awesome. The only reason that came about was, you know, we were, again, we're new to it. We're making our first run and the guys on the canning line said, Hey, underneath the date stamp, you know, we can put anything you want there. I'm like, really? But yeah. Like, do you want anything there? And I just was like, yeah, sure. Why don't you just put dads are cool too on the bottom. And, you know, I think Jill wasn't there at the time. So it was like (laughs) my little Easter egg to say, Hey, I'm going to put something cool for the guys out there. And we've got some pretty fun stuff on the horizon coming for, uh, for fans. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll, I think people will enjoy it. Well, and that'll take me to my, the last part of this interview, which is, um, you know, the theme of this, of the season is mother. And I'm, I'm really exploring sort of the aspects of what that means and kind of a non-gendered in a non-traditional way. And, um, so it's so interesting to hear you guys, you know, talk about this, this expansion to dads, but, the, the thing that I love about what you guys are doing and so many entrepreneurs that just get it right are you, it really is, you guys fit that slot of necessity as a mother of invention, right? You had a need, you figured it out, it worked for you, and then you were able to scale it because it was just so human and kind of imperfect. But I do have to ask you guys, are both of your moms still around? Do you have any good mom stories? Yes, they're both still around. Uh, you know, and I think like probably most of our friends is when we started doing this, they're like, kind of looked at us with one eye open, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, yes. you're going to do what? You guys work in healthcare and you're going to start an alcohol brand? <laughs> yeah. And you're going to call it what again? Uh, you know, we still have people called mom's water or whatever. And, and so I think my mom, along with pretty much everybody, everybody's a little skeptical. And, and, and as things started to kind of develop and evolve. And I think everybody started to try to see it's, you know, they don't get to see what we see on a daily basis with all these emails and people, you know, contacting us and reaching out on social media. So with my mom, she was very hesitant, um, you know, obviously backs us on whatever we do. Uh, But once she tried Karen, she was on board. (laughs) (laughs) So she gets her own lifetime supply of Karen. She wants to keep the Karen coming. So whatever that takes, uh, she was on board. (laughs) Yeah. And so then it's like, you know, panning for the mom names. What do we do? You know, so there's, it's just so fun during the whole process to see them um, supporting us and coming to the realization that, wow, you know, it's the first time it was ever on a shelf and in our little small town of Burden. And, you know, they sold out in like eight hours. Wow. Well, you guys, I think, have not built a brand. You've built a community and it just has a name. I love that. Yeah. I, you know, it's not something really I'd thought about, but you know, you're right with the way things have been. It really has kind of been this community. We've noticed a lot of moms will they'll find it. And then they're like, wow, this is really cool. It's almost like they've taken ownership, which we love. I mean, we want this yeah. to be everybody's. And, you know, they're all of a sudden they're like, I'm going to go take this to a party and show my friends. It's almost like it's theirs. Right. And when they show their yeah. friends, the, the reaction they're getting is what drives them to keep doing that. It's really been really, really cool. So Bryce, have you discovered anything new about moms doing this or anything new about your wife as a mom? I, the one thing that I joke about and say is I've discovered how moms in general, when they like something or dislike something, 
they love to share it with all their friends. I mean, it's a very, it's, it's this tight knit community, right? I mean, being a mom is obviously a, a, one of the most special things in the world. And obviously what they do is one of the most special things in the world. And it's, it's like they love sharing things with others. Yeah. Well, well done, you guys. It's, um, it's very fun. And it's fun to hear your passion and your, you know, letting it be cheeky and not taking it too seriously, but still, you know, investing, uh, taking a lot of risk to, to bring it to the world. I just think it's going to do nothing but get bigger and bigger. And so the last question I'll ask both of you is what I ask everybody, which is how would each one of you define beautiful thinking? It's a really good question. So to me, beautiful thinking is, you know, having something in your mind that you come up with yourself that develops into something that you, you trust, um, that you know, and, that, you know, it's, it's something stemming from nothing that's, that you have done yourself. You find something within your mind, you develop something, you nurture that thing that idea and, and bringing it to fruition. Very cool. What about you, Jill? I like his answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here staring. I'm like, yep, that, yep. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. And, um, and I thank you for sharing your story. And I think it's going to do nothing but just continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it, Carolyn. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you found something that inspires you to think strange, different, new, and beautiful thoughts. This podcast was created and produced by Young & Laramore, an independent agency focused on helping national consumer brands take a stand. To explore more about today's conversation and all of the other thinkers I've spoken to, check out our blog, The Beautiful Thinkers Project, or follow us on Instagram at The Beautiful Thinkers.